Okay, hello everyone. Uh, uh, previously, the foundation and the project has recently held an election for the governing body that we call the core team. So the newly elected core team took office from past July of 2020. And here we would like to invite you for a virtual town hall meeting. Uh, we will be holding two different sessions considering the different time zones. People are staying in or people are leaving in. So this is the first session and this will more be addressing towards the uh, US side of the people. So uh, morning we'll have another session especially addressing the people from the other part of the world, more specifically from the Asia Pacific side and from the Pacific side and from the European side. So uh, at first I would like to introduce you to our core team members who are actually present today and they will actually introduce themselves with a little bit of their information. So today we have with us uh, Ed, uh, Ed Master, then we have Warner Losh, we have Mark Johnston, we have uh, Sam Chitterenden, then we have a Scott Long and uh, I am here as uh, the core team secretary. So at first, uh, I'd like to request Ed to introduce himself. All right, I am uh, Ed Mast. I got my start with FreeBSD, um, working for and later managing the operating system uh, platform group at a company that built a product uh, based on FreeBSD and got my commit bit in 2005, um, working on some network stack locking TCP uh, related things with Robert Watson uh, back then. Um, worked at that company for quite a while, went on and did some consulting work um, uh, after that. And for the last several years, I've been working with the FreeBSD Foundation on the sponsored projects and staff that we have working for us. Um, and my, one of my overall goals, I think, on the core team is trying to make sure that FreeBSD is an attractive project for new developers, for um, university students or others who are interested in, um, especially interested in learning about systems programming, um, but just generally um, new people to the project who, who want to uh, find, some, uh, find a project that they can feel at home at and contribute to. Okay, now we have uh, George Neville Neal. He's going to introduce himself. Chris, I'm going to take myself off mute. Hi, I'm George Neville Neal. I've worked on FreeBSD for many years, and before that, on some bits of BSD. I'm the co author with McKusick and Watson of the latest design and implementation of the FreeBSD operating system, and I've been on Core a couple times before. Um, for this core, this round of Core, um, I have a couple of goals, one of which is to um, push for a modernization of FreeBSD on newer architectures and also get us to be more accepted in the building of new and interesting appliances, which is an area in which FreeBSD has done well in the past. And I think an area that we need to um, come back to and get more people building things on top of FreeBSD. Okay, now we have uh, Mark Johnston, who is going to introduce himself. Hi, um, I'm Mark. I've been a source committer for, um, I think, around seven or eight years now. Um, I've worked for a few different uh, vendors that use FreeBSD as the basis for uh, an appliance OS. And now I work full time as a, as a contractor doing, doing similar work. Um, I'm interested in. in interested in, in helping modernize our development process and reduce some of the friction that, that developers, especially new developers, experience when they come in. We have a lot of different ways of doing things, and it's um, I think it's become a bit challenging to bring new people into the project. So I'd like to help uh, improve that. Um, and I'm also interested in working with uh, vendors that use FreeBSD and helping understand their frustrations and seeing what we can do to make it easier for them to contribute back to FreeBSD. Okay, now we have uh, Scott Long, who is going to introduce himself. Scott? 
Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Scott Long. I've been a committer since 2000 and a user of BSD since 1992. Um, I've worked in places like Netflix and Yahoo uh, on FreeBSD, promoting the operating system and driving technologies back into the tree. And um, my my big goal, like many others, is to keep FreeBSD sustainable, to recognize um, what we need to do in order to keep momentum up and not only attract new people, but also keep uh, existing people engaged. Uh, should we introduce yourself, Sean? Howdy, uh, returning corp. Uh, interested in uh, largely in, in reducing friction and uh, making sure that that's the sticking points for companies using FreeBSD are you know addressed at kind of the top of the pile because that's where a lot of, of investment comes in into the operating system and um, yeah now we are going to introduce Warner Losh Warner can you please introduce himself sure thing uh, my name is Warner Losh I was in core 10 and I'm here for a second term I won't be here for a third consecutive term though uh, my goals are um, like the others to help reduce the friction in FreeBSD to make sure that we get Git um, launched successfully uh, and look at other areas of, um, I guess, infrastructure stuff in the project to make sure that if we, for example, do multiple tier ones, what does that mean? Um, you know, if we're uh, fighting amongst ourselves, how can we reduce that friction and, and so forth? Now we are going to introduce Kyle Evans. Kyle, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Kyle Evans. I'm, I've only been around for maybe four or five years. And uh, uh, my main goal is to help improve project communications. We're not actively scaring people away by not actually communicating when we're having problems and, you know, the cause and how we address those. And uh, generally stuff like that, making sure that we are fostering a new development community. We have two more uh, core over Baptist Jarosin and Hiroki Sato-san. Unfortunately, they are not available on this session, but they will be available on tomorrow's session. Uh, they will introduce him themselves in the next session. Uh, next, we have in our topic is uh, about discussing the proposed terminology changes, which uh, the recent developers have seen it as in a mail in the mailing list and otherwise uh, Mark is yeah. going to discuss about it. Sorry, yeah. Scott is going to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, wanted to talk about this, and and um, but one thing we haven't we haven't said yet is just how how we're, how we're going to interact with uh, other people on the call right now. Um, I know we talked about having uh, IRC channel for um, feeding questions in. Um, so, Moan, if you're Monitoring that, um, please please interrupt me and let me know when there's a question. Um, please feel free to to interrupt and, and ask for clarification on what I'm talking about or you know what everyone in this meeting is talking about because we do want this to be interactive and be a chance for um, for people to to discuss their feelings about it. Um, and then at the end, we'll have, just have a, a general question Q and A type of thing. So um, so yeah, for the proposed terminology changes um the you know blacklist whitelist master slave type of discussion that uh started about a month ago i think three or three or four weeks ago in the community with a message from core um you know that caused a lot of concern um a lot of uh very passionate arguments on the mailing list as i think we all saw i think there were at least 200 if not 300 messages in one of the threads about it um and i you know i wasn't Part of that decision that was that was core 10 trying to wrap up some of their outstanding business before passing over to core 11 and i think that they were trying to just kind of you know actually make the transition easier for core 11 and get a an old item off their plate uh and they didn't realize just how passionate people are going to be feeling about it so um you know as such you know the, that discussion happened um and we recognize that that's a good but the outcome of that discussion is a couple things. Uh, number one, it's a good learning 
point for the core team to recognize that um, we need to be more proactive earlier on about community involvement, community discussion, and these kind of things, because you know, this is our project as a whole for the whole community. And, um, you know, things like terminology that are more emotional and less technical um, need a lot of community involvement and for the community to kind of air their emotions and come to uh, a, a group agreement on how these are done. So um, that's a big takeaway and something that we're going to be really focusing on going forward as core team is recognizing, you know, the, the difference between things that need to be discussed in private and core, you know, mainly personal uh, issues, uh, things that, that uh, you know, helping resolve disputes in private and issues that uh, really affect the whole community and require the whole community to, to be heard and, and give input and be part of the process. So, um, like I said, that's going to be our, our big focus with uh, talk about terminology going forward, but also just kind of our, our business in general going forward. And that's also one of the reasons why we're going to have more of these town halls, um, you know, give give everyone a, a clear picture into what core team is doing for them and, and how they can be part of that process. Um, so with that, um, you know, kind of the, the, the background with terminology change is there is a, a push in the industry across the world um, to recognize that some of the language that we that we use in English to describe uh, functions and operations in computer science um, are not always uh, positive terms and, not, and are, not, are not inclusive terms and terms that, that make everyone feel comfortable. So things like whitelist and blacklist and master and slave are good examples that, um, you know, don't have any overt Problems to them, but it just have have a have, have a, a subcontext of, of 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 being problematic in modern times. So we're looking at um, other open source communities, other closed source communities. Um, you know, Twitter, Linux have both announced recently that they are going to be making some efforts to um, migrate their terminology proactively. Um, LVM has already changed. Um, the blacklist the uh, uh, security project has, has changed to block D. Um, we're also looking at what that means in the in, in the industry outside of ourselves, like hardware. So we looked at like SCSI. SCSI has SCSI SAS have, have no mention of master slave. ATA did a long time ago, but they they removed that mention a long time ago. Um, technologies like SMBus and uh, I square C have a lot of that terminology, but there's also some talk in, in those industries of making that change. So we're we're basically looking at all that and want to help facilitate the FreeBSD community to keep up with that. You know, as as external projects change and we share code with those external projects, we're going to be taking in their changes um, as external technologies, hardware technologies change, and you know, specs and documents change. We're going to be taking that stuff in. So we want to ensure that we have a smooth transition within our project, we want, and we want to make sure that everyone in the, in the project is comfortable with where we're at, and you know, see if there's if there's things that, um, you know, basically, um, you know, we we as a core team are not going to be uh, dictating what needs to change, what doesn't need to change. We are looking to facilitate what the community is comfortable with doing and how that meshes with the wider open source communities in the world and, and technology communities in the world. So um, with that kind of introduction, um, you know, it, I haven't seen any, any, any interruptions from the IRC channel yet, but if people have questions, we can spend a couple of minutes kind of addressing those and we can move on to the next topic. If people don't have questions, I have one thing that I could add, which is the project's not trying to be um, at the extreme edge of um, this issue. We want to be in the mainstream, both in terms of the society and in terms of the project. And one of the things the core team wanted to do was to highlight that we might start that we were starting to skew a little bit, perhaps. Um, uh, and there was a mismatch, and the original message was hoping to highlight. Um, you know, that that was going on and that, um, you know, people could, if they wanted to, start 
looking at this issue. Um, but uh, then it veered off and we talked past each other <laughs> in the very long thread we had. So, Right. You know, I think one thing is that core team is supportive of of code maintainers of making changes that that suit their 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 needs. Um, we're not coming up with a prescriptive list of everything that's going to change because uh, that's that's a hard list to maintain and, and it's easy to make mistakes with it. So it's more, you know, we're supportive of the community in making those changes, and we're giving a heads up the community that there's going to be external pressures on us too uh, from code that we share and, and take in and technology that we share and take in. Um, so really, it's kind of a heads up that you know these changes are, are happening. It's not previously we, weeding the way, being being on the cutting edge. It's more previously being responsible in the community. One of the comments that was made on IRC was that um, there are a lot of downstream consumers uh, for FreeBSD as well who want to move away from the terminology. Um, so. They have products that they want to present to their users, and, and they don't want to present the problematic stuff. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. So yeah, it's it's kind of you know we're all in this together, and we all want to work together on it. And um, you know, we do recognize that things can be taken out of context. That that things that don't seem like they have any kind of a negative uh, meaning to them uh, in one language can sometimes. Uh, be that way in, in another language or another culture. You know, we're not trying to be the culture police about it, but we are trying to be responsible about it and recognize that the world is changing and that both upstream and downstream are, are their needs are, and desires are changing. And we, our job is to help facilitate that in the middle. I think we don't have any questions here on the chat or in the IRC, so I think we can move on to the next topic. There, there actually was one question on IRC, and which is where can the community read that discussion? It was in the private developers list, so unfortunately, um, the community um, can't read that discussion. That was also one of the problems. We shouldn't have just done it to the developers. It should have been a community-wide thing so that everybody in the community could have talked about it. Um, unfortunately, uh, the number of people involved in the discussion makes it hard to share that um, outside, outside the developers list. OK, so uh, we are moving towards our next topic. So as an op open source uh, project, FreeBSD is a very huge and large project. They said that uh, we need to maintain lots of hardware resources. And for maintaining those resources and administering those resources, we have different teams, like security team, the cluster admin, then port managers. So uh, when a new core team actually takes over the new office, uh, we need to assess the needs for each of the teams that what we are running the different aspects of the projects, and we are always looking for help. So we are, uh, we will discuss like what teams we have in our list and uh, uh, Mark Johnston is going to discuss about it. Mark? Yeah, um, so I, I don't want to go into too much detail right here right now. Um, I just want to really make the observation that, okay, well, you have the core team itself, which which turns over every two years, um, which means that there's a regular opportunity for, for new people to, to join the core team. Um, most of the other teams that we have in FreeBSD, so um, for, for example, port manager, cluster admin, security team, the release engineering team, and so on, um, don't have that kind of regular turnover. So a, a common pattern that's that, that we've noticed and we've already discussed in the core 11 term is that, um, you know, the, the pattern is that a, a few people will, will create a team or join a team and do a lot of a lot of fantastic work. And over the course of several years, they, they get burned out or they, you know, their, their time, uh, their time becomes limited, or, or for whatever reason, they, they have less time to invest into that team's work. Um, and the team as a result, uh, ends up stagnating. Um, 
So one of the things that the core team would like to do in this term is uh, evaluate the needs of each team. Uh, so, you know, some of them we think are doing fine. Others need need some some help in getting uh, fresh members and, and fresh perspective. And I think we'd also like to look a lot at um, uh, ways of improving communication. Um, a lot of these teams are um, you know, don't don't have any convention for publishing regular status updates or informing the community at large uh, as to what they're up to or what their goals are. Um, and I, I think that's something that would, would both help bring in new people and, and help revitalize uh, uh, some of those teams. Um, so again, I, I don't really want to go into any, any specifics here because it's it's we're still at the point where we're, we're trying to figure out you know, who, who's going to look at which team and, uh, and we need to evaluate their states and so on. Um, but if anyone has any, any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Mark, should we mention that anyone listening should be should feel free to email Core saying they're interested in helping out on one of the teams? Uh, certainly, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we can we can definitely put you in touch with the right people um, and uh, use that as a as a jumping off point for getting more people engaged with the with the corresponding team. Cool. What's next? Okay. So uh, next, uh, to continue our openness initiative, the core team has decided to start publishing their total list, and uh, this will be in addition to the normal meeting minutes, which we publish regularly on quarterly report and monthly report, and for other openness ideas. And the core team would really love to hear from the community about how to improve our communication with the community and the developers and everyone else. So, uh, Warner, are you going to discuss something about it? Um, so, I'll just say a couple words. Um, we had hoped to have for this meeting uh, the list scrubbed, but there were a number of items that carried over from the last core, uh, as well as a few uh, personnel issues. You know, we've had to intervene with developers and in their interaction with the rest of the community. And we don't want to publish those things, but all the rest of our agenda we'd like to publish. We've been publishing meeting notes and so forth for some time now, and this is um, uh, the next evolution in that towards um, having a more open uh, core uh, just in general. Um, we're also looking at different things uh, we can do to make uh, things more open. So if you have any suggestions, um, if you can share those with the core team, we would love to hear about them. And in the future, we'll, uh, you know, there'll be a page that you can go to that's a live or nearly live list of our to-do items. Those are the item, agenda items that are in process that we haven't yet uh, reached resolution on. So that's all I think we need to say about that. Yeah, I think we're, you know, we meant to have it ready to go today. It's not ready yet, um, but we're continuing to work on that. We hope to have that published here soon, hopefully the next few days or a week. So I think we don't have any more questions. So can we move towards the next topic? Yeah, I think that uh, just like we've got a small core chat channel where we're discussing in the background and some of the things that we're just like noodling on right now is is um, even having um, part of our core team meetings open live stream similar to this so that some folks can can get a taste of, of what uh, core team actually discusses. And then uh, even, you know, one thing that just uh, riffed there was was potentially a, a public core team Slack channel or something like that, so that folks can can drop by and have kind of interactive discussions and get things off of email, which may be helpful as well. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, uh, now we are going to uh, Sean is going to uh, introduce the community survey results and share some of the preview of the results. So, Sean. 
Yeah, or um, I don't know if I'm going to be sharing some of them so much as like we've got the results and we're working through them. Uh, we haven't had the cycles just because of some of the stuff that's gone over the last, uh, both the end of the core 10 term and, and start of core 11. Um, but we do have the, the, the 2020 results. Um, it's not something where I can just blat out a link, unfortunately. Um, not because there's anything to hide. It's just not something that we can do. Um, so um, we're going to take that information, compare and analyze what we've got for 2019 and 2020, put that into like a Google presentation and make that available both to developers and community. Um, there's some interesting findings in there. Um, you know, obviously one of the big things that came out of the 2019 community survey um, really helped push for us to go in and um, uh, move to Git real quick or with, with some degree of aggressiveness. There was basically no ambiguity um, in the community results uh, from last year about the, you know, un near universal. I mean, there's there were a handful of subversion holdouts, but uh, people that wanted subversion were in, in this really tiny minority. Um, to, so to move to get um, in this new, um, uh, in the new community survey, um, now that that's kind of like off the table, there's there's a bit of, of discussion about how we handle developer workflow, um, but, you know, Nothing earth shattering or um, in some sense, if you looked at the 2019 survey, um, you know, the, there's kind of some, um, there's some some elements of the community that were surprised by the amount of desktop and laptop usage. And that's, you know, something that that actually the foundation took to heart as something that they're going to go, hopefully go and spend some resources on. Um, on the server side of things, a fair amount of cloud usage and interest there um, and some of the comments and sections there. So. Um, the community survey definitely is helping us kind of like prioritize a, a hit list of things that we can actually take action on. And so hopefully a lot of the core 11's agenda will be basically data driven from what we learned from the community and the community survey. Um, in addition to a few things that we need to do as a group, just kind of from a, we're skating to where the puck is going, not where the puck it was 10 years ago kind of a thing. So stay tuned there. Thanks, Sean. So I see there was a question in the chat channel. Do you have any thoughts on how to deal with burnout yet, or is it still a work in progress? I guess that that question is uh, tied to the tied to the topic of the various teams in FreeBSD. Um, I mean, I you know, burnout I don't think is ever going to be anything other than a work in progress. Um, there's only sort of you know, various proactive things that we can do to avoid it, right? So we've touched on a lot of those already. We want to bring new people and especially young people into the project. Um, you know, they, they have a lot more, well, they, they tend to have a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Um, I started working on FreeBSD when I was a student and, and I think my eyes were a bit brighter back then. Um, and having worked with a few students in, in the past couple of years on FreeBSD, um, it's, it's really refreshing to be able to to, to bring someone new into the into the project, um, so that's that's one area that I would I would you know continue to focus on, you know, with or without my core hat on, um, and I guess the other major thing for me at least would be would be increased communication and, and you know uh, having having processes for teams to communicate what they're working on what they're stuck on, um, not necessarily trying to. You know, promote or or, or um, try trying to evaluate themselves, but rather just say, okay, well, this this is what I'd like to do, and here's where I am, um, because you know the response to that kind of thing can can be uh, revitalizing. It can attract new people. Um, so, yeah, I, I I don't think it's it's ever going to be a problem that's solved completely, but there's there's definitely proactive measures that we have to keep up if we're if we're going to fight it. Yeah. I'd like to add um, to amplify a point Mark made about communication. Um, the more that we talk to the teams, the more that the core team can understand uh, when people are starting to burn out um, sooner, so that we can start, uh, you know, looking for additional help, or um, you know, look to transition people that are have burned out onto into different roles, um, transition fresh people in, uh, and uh, that sort of thing is kind of wearing our management hat is just to uh, notice it and uh, react more quickly than uh, core has in the past. I mean, if I want to just jump in on this briefly, 
one of the things that hasn't been touched on that I think we can promote as Core 11 is pushing for more documentation from teams and getting the ability for more brain transfer, right? The, the problem with burnout is not only do you lose a person, but if things aren't written down or communicated within a group, then it's very hard to give a new person the ability to get done, work done quickly and, and the, the mountain becomes very high for them to, to join the group. So I, mean, I think from a core 11 standpoint, we should really be, we'll really be encouraging all of those teams to write down what they do, how they do it, how it works, so that it's easier for new people to come in and help. Manual processes versus code. Automation is definitely in the project's future and it's a big emphasis. But if we solve burnout, like we would be engineering management, you know, gurus industry-wide, that's just a chronic problem across, you know, people so all right what's next i think we don't have any questions so i'll move toward the next topic uh, our next topic is about git transition so most of the developers of freebsd community already know that uh, we are moving away from sdn towards Git, and we have a working group for that ed is actually leading that working group so uh, we'll be discussing it uh, to just raise our awareness, and Ed will try to give a brief presentation. And uh, we'll try to answer a very few questions and keep it limited towards it because uh, uh, to our coming on just this topic about quick translation that we have to do with tentatively in the second week. So, Ed. Thanks. Um, Warner uh, will also uh, jump in here a bit. I think um, the two of us have, have been doing most of the um, the work leading the, the Git working group. So um, as folks are probably aware, uh, we've had a free BSD Git mirror um, of our source of truth subversion repo for years and years and years. Um, and uh, the previous core team, Core 10, um, basically provided a mandate that um, the project will transition to to a Git um, uh, canonical repo as our sort of source of truth re repo. Um, and we've been working on, um, uh, for, for several months, we've been working on that actual transition process. Um, so there's, there are a number of things that um, we want to make sure we get right. Uh, in preparing the the conversion in the repository uh, to to use it as our our canonical repo um, for the uh, with subversion remaining the source of truth as it does today and a Git mirror there are a number of things in our converted history um, that are you know misrepresentations the metadata is not quite correct and it doesn't really matter um, but. We're, we're, today we're still doing vendor imports, say, as um, in, in with the subversion tooling, and the way that the converter represents that maybe is um, the, the the previous or the currently running converter um, represents that has some some trouble, um, and so in transitioning to a Git source of of truth repo, we have um, a bunch of misconversions in the past that we want to correct so that we're able to support um, uh, support future vendor updates so llvm and elf tool chain and um, xz and all, you know all, all of the contrib software that we have in freebsd um, we need to have things set up right so that we can we can do future imports and we have a lot of workflow um, items to work through so the release engineering team needs to do a little bit of um, retooling to change the way that the release builds are done. The security team um, has some work to do to change the way that security updates, uh, security advisory binary patches are built. Um, and in the fullness of time, a lot of these things actually become um, become much easier. So the, uh, the security team, for example, um, the workflow is much, much improved by being able to stage all of the work that's going to appear in an advisory um, uh, privately and then just publish that um, at the time that uh, that it needs to, to, to become public. Um, so 
uh, where we are now, we have a host uh, cgit beta dot freebsd dot org, um, which is is the current kind of uh, interim iteration of the Git repo. Um, the hashes on there are different from the the hashes on the, the current GitHub mirror, um, and the hash, those hashes will change again over the course of the experiment. Um, what I expect we'll do is is get a cadence um, now uh, of sort of picking every two weeks. Say we'll we'll do an epoch and say, all right, here is the the current version of the co of the conversion, um, and when we're happy with it, we'll we'll say it's not changing anymore. Uh, you can base your work on here, and then on a flag day in the future, um, uh, access uh, right access to subversion will be shut down, and new commits will have to go into the the Git repo. Um, essentially, what's happening is um, uh, Ulrich uh, Sporline uh, UQS has has been doing all of the work on improving the SVN to Git converter um, and the that converter itself is also uh, it's public so if you want to see the the work that's been going into addressing those sorts of things um, uh, you can have a look at that it's all um, mentioned on the freebsd dash git mailing list uh, all the discussion about the, those sorts of technical details um, and so basically he's been iterating on fixing up metadata for old commits to get them into the right format um, or to match what you know our view of of uh, history for real of, of reality as far as the history is concerned um, goes and then um, from there we're basically uh, um, iterating on writing up the process of documentation so there's a draft now uh, of a git primer um, it, right now it's essentially a kind of straightforward translation from what we had as the the subversion primer so some of those items in there you know, are basically placeholders. It's, you know, we need to document how you do this in the Git world, and it's not filled in yet, but, um, you know, the, the kind of, the, the sketch of, of what we need to, to document um, uh, is in there now. Um, uh, the, one, two things there, actually. One of them is this IRC question, but uh, the first one is, is, is like some of the work that you've done or that we've done in the, with regards to the conversion has also resulted in us having needing to submit patches upstream to Git itself in order to, support or work around some issues that we've run into as a community trying to import you know our legacy tree i don't know if that's something you want to yeah let me jump on. Up it's, on that. It's, not just, it's not just a simple import i guess is what i wanted to highlight but yeah let me jump up on that for one 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 moment here um so our current plan for managing um uh the vendor code is to use uh git subtree um which allows us to split out a subtree um so for example our, our, our version of LLVM that's in, uh, contained in the base system, we can use Git Subtree to split that out to a separate repository and then to also merge in new versions. Um, and it allows us to maintain our single mono repo. So we expect that we're still going to have the exact same workflow for, for FreeBSD users. You do one checkout and you get the entire um, uh, tool chain and all of that sort of thing uh, uh, automatically. Um, but there were a couple of issues um that we ran into and that uh it turns out some other um uh other projects with very large and complicated histories um have run into in trying to use git subtree so i've been collaborating with a another developer in the, the git community to um to get some uh some patches into git to to improve that uh situation um and also i've been working with people in the the git community to make sure that our uh, the test suite, the Git test suite runs um, on FreeBSD and, and is integrated um, in uh, is now integrated into um, in CI. So so uh, Git's um, Git's pre commit CI uh, is using uh, or runs against FreeBSD now as well. Um, was there was one other thing there, Sean that. Uh, I was just gonna uh, comment, uh, like there's a couple of questions there up at IRC as well. Um, one of them, uh, so aspirational timeline, looks like that's, you know, the sometime actually here in the month of July-ish is kind of what the, what you're shooting for, or what's that look like now? So the um, uh, the window um, that's kind of been presented is, um, 12.2 for the FreeBSD 12.2 release process is kind of a hard, um, hard stop for doing anything, um, 
uh, during that that period. Um, so basically, um, we're, we're trying to line it up to be ready prior to the the code um, code slush for um, uh, for twelve point two. Um, if uh, kind of the the um, escape valve, uh, you know, if if we're not able to to do it, we're not going to push the release off indefinitely. Um, uh, immediately after twelve point two is is the kind of um, the the secondary choice. Cool. Warner, um, Jeff, uh, <clears throat> so um, okay. Uh, Warner, do you want to continue? Or, uh, we have another more question. Well, I, was, I, was, I, I was going to just add that um, so, <clears throat> the the cutover that we're planning in July or August um, will be uh, phase one which is taking the current uh, subversion workflow and translating it to Git and having um, initial workflows that have to be different between subversion and Git um, translated. And it's not gonna be the final destination. We'll continue to evolve um, our use of Git as we find better tools that um, it can provide. One of the reasons for taking this approach is we have a large number of developers who know how to do things and one of the um, one of the requests has been that we make the transition uh, not super painful if we can. And so we've uh, 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 <clears throat> sorry, we've adopted this kind of phased approach so that the first phase is you're mostly familiar with it. We've got the primer, so you know the differences. Um, and unless you're doing vendor imports or something like that, it'll be much the same with just a slightly different tool, a uh, slightly different workflow, but easy to pick up. In the future, yeah, I guess we'll we'll do we'll do more um, to uh, you know and go from a continuous testing environment to a continuous integration, to have better integrated reviews, to accept patches from more places. All of these things Git enables, but they won't be in the initial phase when we roll out because we're trying to hit this window in the summer, and we don't want to. You know, delay it so that every absolutely everything is there. That, that's a really good point, um, Warner. Uh, I think you know we, we've we've sort of explicitly said that out of scope for the current work is changing our bug tracker or changing our review system or broad broadly changing um, our our workflow. Right. So uh, we're we're you know we're going to maintain a linear history. People will push. Um, Directly to the Git main branch um, uh, as um, as development happens when we start. I think there are quite a lot of uh, a large number of workflow improvements that we can uh, that Git can facilitate. Um, but at the beginning, you know, uh, our conceptual approach to the way we do things is not going to change significantly. Um, and that, and then when we have that as a base, um, we'll, we'll start experimenting with and investigating um, and, and trying out different things um, from there. So Ed, I'm gonna ask you the question uh, from IRC. Mm -hmm. um, given that we have uh, SVN Lite in our base, are we looking at alternative tools to import to base uh, to deal with a Git repository? So that, that's a good question. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, the kind of the, the stock Git client uh, is GPL. Um, there are a number of uh, copy free or permissively licensed Git clients um, available, uh, but there's some problems with all of them. Um, either they're you know not far enough along yet. There are some um, uh, some C uh, some some Git clients implemented Git compatible clients implemented in C um, that are not fully usable yet. Um, and then there are a number of um, uh, a number of Git implementations in, in other languages. This is certainly something that um, uh, that we we need to address. I don't think we have we, we, we don't have a a, uh, a final answer for it yet, Sean. But yeah, I was going to say I think that when Core Ten started scratching scratching the surface and, and looking at carving out the working group for this, 
we were very much in the throes of the discussion of package base, if people remember that. And uh, we were like, hey, this is easy. Like, we'll go and do a package ad for some, you know, Git light type um, client. And since it's coming from ports, no harm, no foul in us using something that's not written in C. There's a pretty advanced Go client, or uh, client, Go library that is very widely used and needs a really thin wrapper, uh, CLI wrapper, um, which is something mm -hmm. we're like, eh, we could go and spin that up. And, but, uh, um, it's written in Go, and so us adding that into base right now potentially means adding a new compiler, question mark. Um, that was a really easy you know, problem to sidestep when we were talking about package base. How we decide to go and handle that now is kind of TBD, but uh, just a historical point of reference for folks that um, some of the current decisions and things that we're working on right now um, are moving kind of on quicksand in the sense that like some of the, the assumptions that we had at the time uh, are not true right now. And for lots of reasons, um, that's just kind of where we are. So Ed, we have another question from IRC, which is about monotonically increasing revision numbers like we have with uh, CVS or Subversion. Um, have, what have we decided, if anything, and how might we implement that? So, I mean, this is, this is a, a very common sticking point um, with Git. Um, you know, there is no R one two three four five um, to get Git produces. Um, that said, uh, we you know we 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 actually do currently generate um, a sort of equivalent um, number. So if you build uh, a FreeBSD kernel um, out of uh, a Git repo, the the string that ends up in uname actually has effectively a generation number in it, which is the number of commits on that branch from the, the root commit. Um, and so it's it's kind of um, a pretty good proxy uh, for that. Um, you know, it, it, it can, that number can answer um, the kinds of questions that people often bring up uh, around, you know, I'm running FreeBSD 12.1, do I have a fix or not based on whether some number is bigger or, or lower than some other number? Um, you know, I think to some extent that's actually, you know, we should try and reframe the way that those questions are are posed and and answer that in a different different way. So people using FreeBSD update or you know dealing consuming FreeBSD via binary updates, um, there are better ways to to determine if you're up to date or not, or if you have security advisories or not. Um, but Git does provide that um, uh, that kind of um, uh, that kind of information. It, in older Git uh, Git versions it was calculated at runtime. So it basically just counts the number of commits going back to the, the root. Um, and in later versions, actually to just as a, you know, sort of internal detail, but Microsoft did a bunch of work um, to store the, um, uh, the generation count in, in Git itself. And they did it as a performance optimization um, so that it speeds up a, a number of op uh, operations that, that you can run. Um, but it's still not really it's it's not plumbed through to the the user interface so it you know there's not a kind of say you know a way to say git log dash dash show me the generation count um right now it's still it's still kind of a bit of a internal <laughs> hidden detail yeah one of the things that other projects do is they will generate a string relative to the most recent tag as well so if you go and hack two or three changes it'll say it's Less than such change plus twelve or something, um, and we might consider doing that. We haven't decided um, uh, for sure and completely um, yet. Yeah, that's the only thing I wanted to add to Ed's otherwise really good answer. Um, the next question is: um, What is um, is the plan for a project hosted Git or Microsoft GitHub hosted Git? Um, I answered it briefly in the channel saying we're posting now in phase one and anything after that is TBD, but maybe you could say a few words on that, Ed. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there are, um, there are a few reasons that for the first iteration, um, hosting it ourselves makes a lot of sense. Um, it is, it's kind of, you know, going back to that, that earlier comment about, uh, incremental change and you've adapting our, 
our existing workflow and model and, and approach um, to a Git world. Uh, I think uh, I think there are some very important reasons that we need to have a um, a GitHub mirror uh, at, at a minimum. Uh, for a lot of folks, um, GitHub is kind of the uh, directory of so of open source software, um, and so you know it's it's pretty important that people can search FreeBSD on on GitHub and find our repo. Um, and there's quite a few things um, that get um, uh, there's there's quite a few things we can facilitate by having uh, still our own self hosted um, uh, Git repo but having a matching uh, mirror, um, for example, pull requests via GitHub would be much more convenient for us to, um, uh, much more convenient for us to, to pull those in um, if we have the same set of, of hashes, the same uh, uh, revision control uh, on, on that GitHub mirror and on our own thing. Um, and then, you know, I think longer term, that's, that's something that, um, that is is uh, open for discussion. So there's a, another, I guess, kind of follow up question, um, and that's: uh, Is the project Git going to be CGit, Git Web, or something like Git T, and where people can spin up or sign up and do pull requests? So I think this is a phase one, phase two sort of answer, but I'll mm -hmm. let you answer that. Yeah, Warner's Warner's uh, right that um, right now the uh, the initial beta um, repo is uh, is CGit, um, and you know there's no um, there's kind of no inherent built-in account system where third parties are going to be able to create an account and, and submit uh, pull requests or some kind of equivalent of that. Um, uh, at the beginning, um, you know, I think that's those are all things that we'll look at um, uh, and experiment with uh, after getting over the the initial hurdle. Right, and since we're mirroring to GitHub, we can still accept pull requests on GitHub as long as we act on them um, and have those be a lower friction way to get into the system. Um, and how we do that, and and how we you know communicate that, and how we make sure that. Things don't get dropped, and we don't set unrealistic expectations. Are all uh, stuff we definitely need to work on. I think it is worth pointing out that that a number of folks on both core, the previous core team, and the current core team do very much believe in the fact that kind of the industry's largely decided what you know the the common you know way of submitting and interacting with open source is, and um, so we don't want to rule out. Being self-hosted, we also don't want to roll out being on GitHub because, frankly, you know most people interact with GitHub in some capacity, and that's worth being aware of. Like, being an island doesn't do any of our our corporate vendors or developers or new users who are frankly trained trained in GitHub and other other as a way of collaborating. It doesn't do us any favors as a community. It doesn't mean that we should only be doing that either. There's there's project sovereignty kind of like things that we're we're mindful of, but. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, universally, small projects choose a hosting uh, environment like GitHub. But larger projects have presence in a number of different places. And we're big enough to be a larger project, so we'll need to figure out what fits our needs best. Um, and whether that's hosting somewhere else, um, a, uh, a hybrid approach. There, there are some projects that have mirrors on multiple different services, so they can get multiple different um, features of those services to make their project products or projects better. So it's it's something that uh, we're not ruling anything out specifically, um, but initially it will be self-hosting. We have any other closing thoughts, or I don't want hard stops people have, but. Yeah, I mean, I think we've we've got a um, a plan to have a, um, a Git uh, transition office hours uh, a full full session focused to to the Git transition. So uh, I think you know there'll be lots of opportunity for folks to um, 
to bring questions there. Uh, definitely give the um, give the Seagit beta uh, a try between now and then. Um, join join the the FreeBSD dash Git mailing list or or look at the archives. Um, give it a try and and follow up on the mailing list or let us know uh, next time around. Cool. All right, we're just about out of time. Are there any other questions? Oh, I see uh, on the um, uh, the IRC, uh, Alan mentions the uh, bug squash uh, party this this Saturday. Um, so have a look at the the wiki, um, the office hours list again uh, for the details on uh, on that. Well, I appreciate there it. No more questions. Uh, we can call an end to this office hours, but stay tuned for our next office hour, which is going to take place within seven hours from now. That is 8 July, 200 hours GMT. Sounds good. So thank you all for joining this office hour. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much.